Now, isn't that quite a profound statement as talking to a B-girl? That, like, you, you walk away from a battle and there's always something that you've got to attend to. Yeah. Yeah, but it's... Um, part, is, part of it is the rehab, the regeneration process mm. that we need to do. We need to learn how regenerative training works. And this is something that I'm working on with my coach. Um, we need Because I actually had a talk with a girl who's doing some kind of nutritional studies on me right now. And I, ta- I told her, I don't have days where I don't train. And he's like, how do you regenerate? I'm like, I do rege- regenerative training. So in order to regenerate faster, it actually makes sense to train on a very low pace to get your body moving and to get your blood flow going so that you can regenerate faster so that the next day you can actually train hard again. That's hard. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct. Not in central London, far from it. In fact, it couldn't be further from the truth. Big shout out to all the regulars, the sharers and carers, the people spreading the word and the gospel. Street culture, come on, son. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, inside the place, Tokyo to be exact. I have a good friend of mine that's in the building and she has skills upon skills. Skills that we're going to talk about within the B-Boy world. My girl has been travelling the world globally, trotting around social media a toe, and uh, I'll tell you something, this is a face to look out for. The future is bright. The future lies in her hands. It is B-Girl, g inside the place. How are you? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> How are you good. doing, girl? I'm you fine. good? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. It was good. Last night was the undisputed event. How yes. was that for you? I loved it. Yeah? I loved it. Um... <laughs> I didn't pass the prelims, you which is fucking uh, great. Though it's been a long time that I haven't passed prelims, but yeah, it's uh, you win some, you lose some, you learn some. So mm. um, yeah, no, it's uh, it it's been amazing because I've actually been watching the whole event and uh, haven't been watching for a long time. Is that a thing? Because when you're in it so so much, so deeply, you kind of lose perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was yeah. good to watch it. Actually, yeah. watch it this time and actually enjoy. Uh, the the art form, so as a spectator. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny that because um, as a spectator myself, I definitely I was working. We were doing the show, the fucking bang show. Big up Hooch, big up Undisputed, all the crew. Absolutely. Um, but I also was watching the levels over here are insane, aren't they? It is crazy. Japan is probably the best in level that you can find, especially for B girls. Mm. And it's never been different. It's since I started. Actually, some of my main in- inspirations have been there tomorrow, uh, yesterday. So there was Narumi. There was Shi Chan. Um, and when I started breaking, I actually watched their videos. So I was super excited that they were that they were also there. Really? Mm-hmm. So these were this was a bit of a homecoming for you that you were with your, with your peers and the people that you looked up to. I would say hip hop is always homecoming. It doesn't really matter where it is, to be honest. Any breaking event is a homecoming because we have, if hip-hop would be a nation, then the events is where we come home to. So coming to Undisputed, since we've been traveling together already for the fourth time now, mm-hmm. we kind of became like a little family and it's um, the events itself, it doesn't matter which event, if it's IBE, if it's... Um, outbreak if it's it doesn't matter what event it is it always feels like okay this these are my people mm-hmm. because when i come back to germany people ask me like where are you where are you from and i'm like i'm german but no no where are you actually from but then when i when i think about iraq i've never been in iraq oh so you're iraqi and I don't, by descent yeah okay got you so and i don't even speak the language so yes hip-hop is uh where i feel home that's interesting it's interesting that does that does that leave you slight well, actually Spicy. I mean, it wasn't my intention to go spicy so early. <laughs> um, but does, it, does that leave you alienated a little bit when people ask you that question? So hip hop actually becomes the, the 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 main cultural compass for you. I became part of the hip hop 
scene in uh, 2006 right. when I was 13. And I was a gymnast before, so gymnastics has a lot of rules, a lot of standards, and you have to follow those rules. And that was not really my thing. Mm. So becoming part of the hip-hop community, starting in community centers, um, you kind of... You, you're always welcome over there. So that's the thing. You always feel like, oh, yeah, this is, this is where I go. This is where I feel home. This is where my crew is. This is where um, my friends are. And I, I, I actually talked with an old classmate last time. Mm. And I was asking him, hey, am I, some kind, of, was I kind of, some kind of nerd outsider? And he just said, like, we just always thought you just did your own thing. And I was thinking, yeah, kind of, that's kind of what it is. Yeah. Because I couldn't really find my place in school. I liked school, I liked learning, and I was a good student, but at the same time, when school was done, and I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier when I was actually graduating. I bet you wanted to get the hell out. I yeah. wanted to just train from morning to evening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's when I actually um, feel like I could actually be myself. So, and yes, I am from Germany, a white country, I'm a brown person. So being alienated is something that in this time right now, is unfortunately still a normal thing. Yeah, and, and as much as the media kind of cover it up with their optimism, it still exists, it's still... Yeah, it absolutely prevalent. exists. I mean, people don't know how to pronounce my name, people don't know <coughs> where my name comes from. Um, yeah, it definitely still exists. But I got to say, it, a lot of things changed, but yes, no, it's, it's definitely not... Mm. Uh, it, we don't get treated equal. Mm. At this point, I want to big up uh, my German crew. Big up Sammy Deluxe all the time. He's a good friend of mine. Um, yep. Yeah, you know, I mean, Germany's <laughs> yeah. got a real heritage yeah. for hip hop. I mean, oh, <sighs> did you know that actually hip hop from Heidelberg? Big up Heidelberg or my Heidelberg crew, you know what it is. Became uh, actually, her it became protected as heritage, as cultural heritage now. When was this? Recently, maybe last week. What, like, so on paper, hip hop. On paper. Hip hop is now a protected cultural heritage of Heidelberg. That's like some stars on the Hollywood walk type shit. No, that's actually so carnival in Cologne is protected cultural heritage. For what? So that it has to happen. That the state has to recognize. provide not only recognize, but actually provide the sources to provide the the budget so that it can continue. So you're telling me that hip hop can continue in Heidelberg based off of this? Yes. It has That's to. It has incredible. to. By law right now. Yo, I have <laughs> never heard of that in yeah. my life. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, Heidelberg, correct me if I'm wrong, had, he had Steber Twins, Torch. Was Torch part mm -hmm. of Heidelberg? I think so. I think so. Oh, was I'm not really great in rap. Not because I'm a big feminist when it comes to rap. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I can tell you a few female rappers, but I'm really bad. Tell us some female to... rappers. Oh, my favorite rapper is DP. Shout out. I mm -hmm. never met you in person, but I want to. Mm -hmm. And um, no, she's amazing. She comes from battle rap and I listened to actually a podcast with her. Awesome. And um, she was saying that she actually wants to keep this, this essence of battle rap, the essence of, um, of her style. A life and it's just amazing because she has she has just so much mm. energy in her voice so yeah big big up to dp my favorite rap artist from big germany big up that mm -hmm. where's she from in germany she's from bonn bonn it's uh, south of cologne and cologne is where i'm from got you um i think there'd be a lot of people out there that would be really pleased to hear that you're a staunch feminist and that you're girl power. and Because when you have people like you that are in the public eye and are able to do, arguably, you know, even to the, the layman's person, um, superhero-based qualities, like, it's good to hear the moral compass stays there. Um, I just want to set one thing... Not straight. I'm not correcting you. I'm just. I just want to give a little extra information. Do it. Go um, extra value, please. I am a feminist, but I'm not trying to say women to the front. Why I didn't? am fighting for equality. I'm fighting for equal opportunities, but I also fight for um, quality. Mm -hmm. So I am absolutely against uh, putting a woman into a position just because we need a woman into in that position, and mm -hmm. then we're just trying to find a woman that is okay with the, with the level. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I am actually, so for any promoter out there, I am denying any uh, judging requests if you're saying, oh, we really want a woman in the judges. Mm -hmm. I don't want these requests anymore because no. I don't want to be booked as a woman. I have, I am probably the one of the most successful dancers in Germany. Um, talk I, that shit. Yeah, Real talk. no, I know, I know. I've been, yeah. I haven't been beaten um, in bigger battles for probably about 10 years. I've been representing Germany for a long time internationally now in finals and everywhere around the world. So if you want to book a judge, you don't have to book me as the female judge. You can just book me as a judge. That's right. This is why I'm not the feminist who tries to be like, every judge panel needs a woman. No. How can we create more opportunities so that women feel more comfortable um, taking those opportunities? Mm -hmm. How can we have... And it starts at training. Um, I actually had a conversation with uh, Red Bull. Shout out to Red Bull Germany. What's that, Red Bull? Because uh, I had a conversation with them one or two years ago and we talked about changing rooms because girls always change in the bathrooms to go to participate at battles. Mm -hmm. Somehow it's totally fine that the men just take off their shirts, take off their pants in the in the main room and that's totally fine. And I'm not saying that there are men who might be uncomfortable with that, but I've not seen a woman doing that. And we all meet in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. We all meet in the tiny ass bathrooms where we squeeze in on trying not to touch the dirty floor, but we have to change there. So I said to Red Bull Germany, hey, how about changing rooms for girls and yeah maybe just have changing rooms should be for obvious guys. Really, exactly yeah. just have changing rooms just have a room where we can drop our bags just have a room where we can take off our shoes and not touch dirty ass floor yeah. and uh this year i competed at red bull germany and um yeah and we had changing rooms yeah. we even had a female physiotherapist and a male physiotherapist and uh, the bench of the physiotherapist was in the room for the girls so that I had no problem taking off my shirt, taking off my sports bra and having my back completely massaged. Yo, I... That was no problem. I, I'm kind of with you there. I, I'm a prudish motherfucker, right? I don't like stripping in front of anybody. Like, you get me down the beach and it's like, all right, cool, where's the change rooms? You know what I mean? I'm not about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to get rid... You know what I mean? I like to come mm -hmm. out like a star. If there was a, if there was a smoke bomb in front of me when I walked out, I'd be doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, make my presence felt. But I don't want to be like putting what should be behind the curtain in front of the curtain. Yeah. So I'm totally and utterly with you. Yeah. I'm all about that. So, um, and I even see think it is unfair that <clears throat> in order to get on stage, we all had to walk through the men's changing room. Yes. And I personally think that's unfair because we had our own space. So the guys should have their own space yeah. and there should be no necessity for us walking through the guys' changing room. So yeah, maybe Red Bull Germany, you can add that. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you something though. That's impressive that they had physios. Yeah, yeah. No, that's amazing. That's, that's an amazing, amazing um, add-on that we have in the last years. For Red Bull, was that a Red Bull-based thing? It was the Red Bull BC1 Germany final. I've got to say, that is... That is something else mm -hmm. like that goes to show there's an, in an attention to the detail f in what you guys do that they recognize and it needs because the competition the level is really fast really high i saw some moves being so close up and seeing it i heard last night when heads were hitting the floor i know. I, I heard I when heard knees were hitting the floor <laughs> you know what i'm saying i know i know how does that feel Obviously, physios do put your arms up because, like, shit like that is, you know, neck breaking stuff. But how does that, how does that alarm you when you hear and you're battling someone that you hear someone's knee bang or head bang? You, you must be like, God, I bet that hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> no, it, it gives me goosebumps, and I'm just like, oh no, I hope it doesn't. I don't. I hope that doesn't give that person a week of being out of practice or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I personally always dance with knee pads. I have a beanie on, a bandana under that because I actually um, I actually started training at the event before it started and I tried to uh, do a, a windmill variation mm -hmm. <laughs> and because I used my head in there, um, I didn't bring my, my beanie in that moment. Uh -oh. I didn't have my knee pads on, but I tried because somebody was actually showing me that move and I was like, okay, let me get it. I, I have no patience to put on my hat. I did it and I feel like oh. I feel like I'm having bruises on my forehead. <laughs> you haven't, but I get you. you, you well, I feel them. <laughs> you do you feel you it? You don't see them, but I feel them. No yeah. way. No, it happens all the time. I need a beanie. I need knee pads. Um, I need my shoulders protected. And uh, yeah, no, I think that's super, super, super important. It's so 
uh, telling them that you, you feel the bruises that we don't see. Now, isn't that quite a profound statement as talking to a B-girl? That, like, you, you walk away from a battle and there's always something that you've got to attend to. Yeah, yeah, but it's um, part, is, part of it is the rehab, the regeneration process mm. that we need to do. We need to learn how regenerative training works. And this is something that I'm working on with my coach. Um, we need Because I actually had a talk with a girl who's doing some kind of nutritional studies on me right now. And I, ta- I told her, I don't have days where I don't train. And he's like, how do you regenerate? I'm like, I do rege- regenerative training. So in order to regenerate faster, it actually makes sense to train on a very low pace to get your body moving and to get your blood flow going so that you can regenerate faster so that the next day you can actually train hard again. That's hard. That is so sick. So I, I, today is a day where I don't practice. <laughs> well, you have to because you've got to rebuild. No, I have to because I don't have a spot and I don't have time because we're actually taking a flight in a few hours. Yes, true. Back to yeah. Europe. <laughs> we don't tell that. That's some more backstage information you don't need. Yes. We are absolutely <laughs> rock star winging it right now. Yeah, this is, we this, absolutely do. This is what we do. We do podcasts in our downtime. Well, that's what I do. Anyway. <laughs> so interesting. So you have a physio, a, a, a coach that looks after you. Yeah. How often do you see him or her? Um, it's a her. It's a Fatima. Big she, up Fatima. Come on. Big, we know big, you're, big we know we're watching. Yeah, no, she knows I love her. She's the best coach I could ever ask for. She is. Uh, she has been a B-girl since 98. Um, she's been dancing <coughs> with female artistics, with the Mighty Zulu Queens. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a popper as well. And then she got into martial arts. Now she's, I don't know if that info is right. And I don't know if I can put out that info, but I think she might get back into being actually an active fighter. <gasps> and what? she's the national coach for... Two different dif- disciplines. I know that is grappling, and I think the other one is kickboxing, but I might be wrong. So she's the national coach of German martial arts. Where do you find people like this? To, to well, we know each other for ages. So we know each other since I started okay. breaking because she's from Germany, and you know the bigger world, especially when I started in the mid two thousands. There were five girls in my area, okay. so we knew who we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. surely, but surely, as a um, Right, there'd be, there'd be some people out there wishing, wondering how you get, a person would get themselves in a position like this whereby you'd have one of the best coaches, where you'd be, you know, you'd be out here in yeah. Japan. I mean, this is, this is a, this is rare, right? Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's a tenacity that you have to install to be the best at anything. Mm-hmm. I think it's, um, so a medal at the end is mostly teamwork and I think that it's it's important to vocalize what you actually want to anybody and um, to vocalize your goals because maybe that person can help you towards their, your goals and maybe um, you can help them towards their goal and maybe even your goals are the same. So for example, my coach, she loves coaching and she loves bringing athletes to their goals and that's her success. Mm -hmm. So me booking her as my coach, she's doing so much extra work apart from the hour that we train. We train like twice or three times a week when I'm in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And she does so much extra work because she's so passionate about my results. She watches all my battles. She's like, okay, I can see how long she's she's holding that freeze. Mm -hmm. Now I know, okay, we need to work on the shoulder stability. Um, And then there's moments where I come where we talk to each other and I'm telling her, oh, I just didn't feel like holding my freeze longer. And she's like, now we need to work on your mental, uh, <laughs> on your mental game. You need to always go for a hundred. I'm like, okay, Fatima. <laughs> so she's an amazing coach. And I think it's really, really important to tell people your goals and how you think you can get there and what you need. But sometimes also people can tell you what you need. And again, she is able to tell me what I need in order to reach my goal, in order to get that medal because we also have to say I'm one of the the elder mm. athletes. You reckon? Huh? You reckon? If I look at the, the we have yeah. a 15 year old girl who won yesterday. Yeah, I know, I know, but, but <laughs> the, the European uh, champion is I'm 16. I'm with it. I'm the, with it. I'm so. with it. But okay, you're talking to an old head here for starters. But Are you doing the competition? Are you doing the world championships? No? Uh, that's what I'm talking right, okay. about. But here's the thing. 
here's the thing though, is you have to you have to develop a level of experience mm -hmm. to get to that thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm not saying that being older is a disadvantage, mm -hmm. but we have to use our maturity, our mm -hmm. knowledge, our experience, mm -hmm. while the young ones, like Nika yesterday, killed it. She killed it. Killed it. Absolutely killed it. But then also gaining the moves. She learned that I'm at a very young age. While I learned, no, you have to have a proper six step and then you can learn a windmill. Where am I? Oh, yeah, I see. Right? So I started practicing windmills when I was mm. 24. Mm. So she's 16 and she already has all the variations of windmills that I can think of. Mm. Right? So I'm not saying, again, maturity experience, all that is an advantage as well. Mm. All I'm saying right now is I really need to focus on my physical right now. I really need to focus on that because a body, especially a female body, works different in their teenage years mm. than in their 30s. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't think I have a disadvantage. I just know that I need to put in work mm -hmm. and I'm willing to do that. So Dope. Going yeah. back to what you were saying about the coaching side of things, mm -hmm. I just had a bit of an epiphany. Tell me how this would work. So, for argument's sake, we'll say quite a few of the battles, they're live streamed or can be viewed in real time, right? So, what's to say that in the future, and tell me if this isn't of an advantage, you could have an earpiece where Fatima mm -hmm. would be watching live what you're doing. I mm -hmm. say this because in Formula One racing, inside the helmet, of the drivers, there's an earpiece. And there's a guy in the cockpit of the station watching the cars go around, seeing in real time what's being done. And he's talking to Lewis Hamilton or whoever huh. about what they're doing wrong as they're going round. Now, when you think about the battles and how that works in b-boying, breaking, then you, you really have the same sort of formula. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about style. It's all about response. And there's also the back and forth of it. Why wouldn't that work? That could work for breaking, right? I absolutely never thought about that. But yeah, that would actually work. That would be funny, I think. She could be um, like, yo, you did that wrong. Next time, make sure you do that. That kind of, it, it can work, but it also can. So we're still talking about the, the very slight balance between arts and sports, I think. Yeah. And this is where I think... Is it possible to create... So creating that moment, creating that connection with the music, you need to hear the music. Mm -hmm. So having an earpiece, okay, one ear is covered. Yeah. Let's say that doesn't take away that you can hear the music. Um, I still think that this is our task as an athlete to actually build up that structure of our round to train that we're able to remember our moves, to bring the moves, to react in the moment because whoever is watching, we're not, we don't know the music. <laughs> we actually hear that music. That's what's incredible. In that moment mm. and we have to react to it. We have to freestyle to it because a lot of people actually think that we choreograph and we know what song is playing, but that's not the case. No, no. Sometimes there's a song played that I've never heard before. Um, so I think it would take away the creation of a moment and the connection to yourself. So breaking is pretty much a therapy tool as well because you connect mm -hmm. with yourself, you're connecting with the moment. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do in meditation is we're trying to blend out everything that's happening around us and we're trying to focus on our breath and we're trying to really be in that moment and not thinking about, did I do my homework? Um, do I have to write my taxes? Right? We're not trying to think about that. We're just really trying to connect with our breath. So what is happening when I go on the floor, I'm not thinking about anything. I never thought about my taxes when I dance. I never thought about any, anything, to be honest. <laughs> All I'm thinking about Zen. is, Zen. yes, it is really, I'm really in that moment. And I think, I think I would take up away that moment if I would have an earpiece. And while I'm really in that moment, somebody's telling me. Not in the moment. I mean, after, you know, once you've mm. done, because it's round for round, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's round by round sometimes. But at the same time. <sighs> I feel you. I think this is our task as a dancer. To, it, to challenge that. To, to learn that. Because we can <clears throat> see the round of 
our opponent. And yes, more brains always have more solutions, but at the same time, I feel like we need to have this one-on-one -on -one fight in that moment. Mm. Yeah. It's an interesting concept, but I feel you. It's more of a um, philosophy mm. than an actual... Uh, yes, it's a philosophy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> than an actual... Uh, Absolutely. We're, we're philosophizing probably, here. Yeah, we probably would be better performing, maybe winning more competitions. But then again, we are really fighting for not being athletes that just do the routine the way it do has to be done work, exactly do because yeah. i think that is why we are such a an enrichment to the olympics because we can actually bring this spirit and this philosophy and we can show this philosophy i hope so so I do hope yeah. so. I always say, who brings a DJ to the Olympics? We will. Yeah, I think that, well, that's certainly a case. It depends, I guess it depends on what the DJ's playing and who the DJ is. Definitely. I mean, this is, these, are the, these, are the ba these are the hurdles that have to be discussed. Like, for instance, all philosophical, of course, but, you know, the, the Olympics will bring a certain level of structure that may not, may, may not, um, fall in line with those more ethical, zen-like properties that that, that break dancing b-boying has. So and we got to say we already lost a few. Yeah. And we need to fight to get them back and not lose more. And That's this right. is really, really important that right now, us as athletes, that we're really getting aware of what we love about breaking, that we protect it as much as we can. Yeah. Because we love ciphers, and to be honest. The, where the where were the ciphers yesterday? Yeah, I know. And I'm not saying that is a, a problem of the event, but it's a problem that we as a culture starting to have because ciphers are slowly disappearing from bigger events. Yeah. And we need to teach our next generation that ciphers is what actually carries a culture. It carries an essence. It carries um, the dancing for yourself and dancing for mm. this smaller amount of people who exchange. Yeah, yeah, that's There's right. There's no audience who's like... I'm applauding for this. This is amazing. No, there's an, an actual exchange. There's an actual conversation happening in the cipher. And we need that part of our culture to stay alive. Nothing's so, more important than that. Exactly. Exactly. And when you step into an octagon with your peers in a cipher situation, there's no money being passed. There's no good reason for you to be there other than you better be fucking good. That's the, that's the best, isn't it? It is. It is amazing, honestly. And sometimes they have cipher king battles. Wow. I wouldn't even call it battle. It's just there's an announcement of the cipher king. And as you say, there's no money involved. But as soon as money is involved, I think ciphers are horrible. Yeah. But that's just me. Yeah. I really don't enjoy it because people are trying to get this title, get this thing. But in the cipher, personally, I don't think it is about who's the best. Mm. It's not about that. It's mm. about what can I give to you? And what can we, can you give back to me? And it's mm. a very intimate moment. Mm. Yeah, and in a in a world in a scene which actually it it thrives off of um, that competitive aspect, that mindset, that aggression. We all know that it's only bravado; it's only fun. But this is kind of what I was coming to. I'm, I'm moving quick. Yes. But, um, yes. but I do feel, obviously, we've got to consider the time because we've got flights to catch, motherfucker. We are international yes, we people do. of mystery here. We've got like 10 minutes. Yeah, we've got 10 minutes. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of ego in breaking. At first, at first when I was hosting, I saw the ego. Then, and I have a girlfriend that's a dancer as well, so. And then I suddenly realised that how insular and uh, self-contained the art within yourself can be like a normal dancer dancing is quite personal mm -hmm. and it's the lowest paid of the art forms mm -hmm. you have to have an ego if you don't then you fall no and we had this conversation yesterday night actually because we were saying why would you enter a battle if you don't think you're the best right if you don't consider you might be the best of that day. Hundred. And this is the thing. And if I if I don't think I can win this competition, I don't enter the competition. Yeah. Well, and good thing is um well I'm I'm ba I'm battling on world level, so I, I consider myself somewhere there. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, it's and it's, Hell yeah. But yes, you it's need right. to you need to have that ego. Mm. 
but it 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 is still a humble ego you because as much as you consider yourself the best you still know the others can be the best too today yeah 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 so it is it is ego but it's a humble ego yeah so yeah, yeah. do you ever do you ever find i mean obviously not vocalize it but do you ever see the ego in a person you know like for instance tyson mike tyson he'd mm -hmm. go into a ring and he would already before the game had even started he could see in the eyes of the opponent yeah i've got you i've got you do you see that mm -hmm. sometimes when you go into the into the battle can you see the the crack in their armor hmm yeah so sick really definitely, really definitely i actually had a battle last time um where i knew that i have a really really strong opponent and i was like okay how can I how can I get her weakness out? Oh, and I was sick. thinking, okay, d because level wise, I honestly even think she's stronger than me. <laughs> <laughs> like when it comes just by moves, I think she's stronger than me, but I also feel like that battle wise I have more experience. Yeah. So what I did is because we like each other, mm -hmm. I was showing her my my very competitive side and I started battling her. I started Showing her, like, come on, come on. Mm. Show me what you got. Come on, me dog. Is that all? Is yeah. that all? Okay, go. let me show you what I got. This is, and I smoked you now. <laughs> and uh, I show her my, my very strong battle side. And again, I watched the video and I'm like, if I look at the video, I don't feel like I smoked her. But in that moment, I feel like, yeah, I smoked her. So, <laughs> come and it's, on. It's, it's really a mental game because I'm, I made her play my game, yeah. which was not her game anymore. Yeah. So I took her into my trap and that was when she became hectic. She started messing up. And when you look at the video, you don't see her mess ups. But when you, when you see it in real life, you see that she was, she was getting hectic. She was rushing her things. And, and if, you, if you get to play that mind game on a person, then that's, um, yeah, that's where the battle actually starts. Yeah, in the mind. Yes, exactly. <sighs> so yes, I had that moment actually just a few weeks back. Um, and yeah, yeah. Is that an endorphin hit? Does that make you, does that like excite the idea of more battles? Is it that, is it a, is it a conscience thing? I would say once the battle is won, I move on to the next battle because yeah. it's the next event. It's the next battle. It's the next round that matters. Not if I get caught up thinking about, okay, yes, I won. Yes, I got this. Yes, I, uh, I won this round. Oh, I got her in her head. Then you're wasting time. Yeah. And already working on the next round. Complacency. Yes. So mm. once, once that battle was over, I had to think about the top 16 battle. Okay, cool. Top 16 battle, what's happening there? Okay, cool. Let me go round by round right by round. The moment the top 16 battle was over and I didn't pass to the top eight, I was looking at all everything I did and I was like okay what can I do better so that next time I pass to the top eight so I'm not really wasting time on thinking of how dope I am in after the mm -hmm. battle I'm thinking about how can I get better and how can I um level up mm. yeah it's pressure hard on that on you it's insane really it's insane do you go to bed at night thinking about it um hmm no, I think about it all the time do you? <laughs> yeah no um pressure Right now, I mean, pressure usually just, usually most of it, it comes from inside. Uh -huh. So there's a pressure when I compete on national events because I have to defend a title and everybody wants to see who's going to be the one who's going to be Jilu. Mm -hmm. So every single time, it, people want to see me lose. Yeah, because the higher you get, the higher you get, the more that happens, right? Exactly, exactly. And mm -hmm. it's not that they... They want to see me lose because they don't like me, but it's an excitement. Mm. It's an excitement of, okay, who's going to get her now? Um, but then when it comes to international, I always play somewhere in the top 10. Not always, obviously. Like We have good days, we have bad days. But I, I, have, I won twice the bronze medal at the World Championships, but then last time I lost in the top 32. So mm. it, it can turn out so differently it's the every life, isn't single it? time. It's life. That's exactly. Life Exactly. So, but I, I do want to bring good results all the time. Mm. And yeah, sometimes we have to remind ourselves that we're just human. Yeah. But the that obsession helps. of the obsession of that does, it doesn't help, does it? Because no, it doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> it totally doesn't help. And yeah, I'm, I'm always on the brink, not always, but I've been lately always on the brink of a burnout because I don't know. I love breaking 
But sometimes I really ask myself, why am I doing this? Like, what what am I doing this of course, for? Of course. But at the same time, I do know that I love competition. I love challenging myself. Mm. I love breaking. I love the battle itself. I mean, mm. you hear how passionate mm-hmm. I talk about mm-hmm. strategy and mm. all this. So I love it. I know that I love it. But then at the same time, it always gets you really emotional all the time as mm-hmm. well because you're you have to deal with failure with personal fa- failure all the time you Injury. have to deal injuries yes last year i had a torn ligament and i couldn't do the german championships wow. and i thought this is it yeah i don't know if i'm coming back from this injury i don't know if i'm if my career is over now i don't know if i can keep my physical um my, my athletic mm. uh, well, while you recover yeah if yeah. i can keep it or if i gain <clears throat> weight or if i lose muscle or anything so the moment the injury happened, my whole wor- world broke down because mm. I didn't know. And right right now, I'm at the point where I feel like, okay, an injury can happen at any time. So let me just do everything right now that yeah. I, I yeah. can do so that I can prevent it. And the other huge plus, the, 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 line, the silver lining of that is at least there's other sisters and bros that you are around with all the time that go through the same emotional yeah. f- fatigue, torment, fun. It's part of the process, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Julie, we have, we have flights to catch. We have flights to catch. And it's been fantastic exactly. you coming on and, and shedding insight into such a, 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 a closely kept world. Yes. And hey, let's do this again because we didn't even talk about work ethic. Yeah, we're going to get... <laughs> I came in here and I showed him a, a video about work ethic and <laughs> how it is different in the US and how it is different in Germany. And We got on some we others. Didn't, <laughs> we didn't even talk about it. Because <laughs> that's how we roll, man. We'll yeah. do a second one then. A second so one it is. It. The let's next time, it. right? Next Undisputed. There we go. We're, we're, Part we're, two. Hey, come on. Kel and Gilu. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be setting up a regular page here. Like with the... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she lives inside the house. Uh, killer, killer podcast. Out like it was out of fashion. Uh, you look after each other. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. You make sure you come around for the next one. All right. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace. <laughs> that was that. Wasn't that fun? That was super fun. We were like. <laughs> <laughs>